And while Elon Musk may be using robots to implant chips into brains, robots are also being used to help dementia patients live better lives. Now, we want to show you QT. This is a two-foot-tall, kind of funky little robot there with a rectangular face. It blinks. It's got two black ovals. The smile appears on the screen, and behind that screen lies a bunch of microphones, a 3D camera, facial, facial recognition, some data recording capabilities. And it's all built by a company in Luxembourg and developed by scientists from Indiana University. Uh, now, patients who have interacted with QT so far well, they've got some mixed feelings. It's not perfect. Sometimes it pauses too long when listening to patients or, or may interrupt them when it should listen, but it is a work in progress and it's something we could see a lot more of. So joining us now is NBC News medical fellow, Dr. Akshay Sayal. Uh, Dr. Sayal, this, this isn't necessarily new, but what sets QT apart from other robots that we've seen try to help dementia patients? Hey, Gotti, I think QT is walking the line for me between between creepy and cute. But let's let's talk about what this this technology is, Gotti. So QT is is a, it's like you said, it's a two foot tall robot developed actually previously for, for people with autism. And now they're trying to see if it can if it can help those with dementia. And I think, Gotti, you know, that that article you had on the screen really summed it up. That writer who had spent some time, uh, both her, her parents had a form of memory loss and dementia. And, you know, she summed it up quite nicely, saying this isn't going to fix my parents dementia. Uh, but for a brief moment, this provided solace that, you know, we, we won't be alone in this fight. And I think that's really hitting the nail on the head is that dementia for, can be extremely isolating, both for patients and their caregivers. And to have another tool like this um, that can actually communicate quite fluently with people um, is really pr providing hope, I think, Gadi, to people who really, really need it when, frankly, there isn't a lot out there. Now, dementia is such a multi-layered condition with, with different types, different stages. How does this robot work through something so complicated? You know, I spoke to the researchers not too long ago, Gadi, and what they told me is they're really focusing on something called ikigai. Uh, it's a Japanese term, actually, Gadi, that roughly translates to, to searching for meaning or purpose in life. Mm. And, you know, we talk a lot about robots and interacting with future, and we see this all in, in sci-fi movies, but they're really focusing on trying to humanize this as much as possible. And they're trying to focus these, these robots on picking up subtle cues, focusing really, Gadi, on what makes these patients click, what makes, what makes them smile, what makes their memories light up, essentially, and, and really by focusing focusing on that by making it as human as possible. No matter what kind of dementia you have, uh, we're hoping to see some benefit. Wow, so ancient Eastern philosophy there into modern technology. Uh, what does this mean for, for the way we think of using robots in the future, especially when it comes to helping patients with different diseases outside of, of dementia and, and autism? You know, the, the one I'm really excited for, Guy, it actually was, it's only a few weeks old, but it's, a, it's an app developed by Cedar sinai and it's kind of, it's very similar to what we just talked about, and it, it's trying to address the mental health shortage. Um, so it uses virtual reality, it was actually developed for, for Apple Vision Pro, and it uses AI, it uses VR to create virtual therapists, um, therapists who are, frankly, God, people can't access one right now. There was a survey just, just a month ago from the APA, the American Psychological Association, 60% or a majority of psychologists have no openings right now. So... I think mm. by, by, you know, on this note of having, you know, uh, open AI or, or having, excuse me, uh, artificial intelligence provide um, that resource to fill in the gap for, for mental health providers, I think is something that I'm really excited about and, and just as well for this as well. That makes so much sense, especially, I mean, L.A., the, the running joke is if you want to go to a therapist and you don't have one already, it's going to take like a year to two to find one that's got an opening on their schedule. Dr. Mm. Sayal, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.